Well, good morning, wherever you're at. It is uh, 5.15, you can see right there, uh, in the morning. And um, <clears throat> you have to get up early this time of the year if you want to get out before the mosquitoes are up. <laughs> Usually if it's a cool morning like this, they don't, they're not up too much. There was one. But uh, got to thinking about this whole thing of the situation with the BRICS nations right now. Um, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and how that there are a whole bunch of other nations that are going to be joining with them here in another two weeks or so, a little bit less than two weeks, I guess now, in July, here in 2023. And um, their big target is the dollar, the uh, American dollar, this scam that has been uh, put upon the world since the early 1900s, I guess. Um, when the dollar became the world's reserve currency. And just thinking about that, I got a mosquito on my forehead. Um, hold on a second here, I have to undo the gate. There goes somebody by on the road. Um, but how do, how do they, uh... okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, we got to thinking about this thing and how do they bring down the dollar? Well, very simple, with the dollar. Uh, see, what America can't handle right now is they're doing, they've been doing this thing for a while just to explain this stuff so you can understand what's happening to your finances in the future. It is a big issue. A lot of people would say it, it doesn't matter and things, oh, it matters very much. Um, but what they're doing is they're doing what's called quantitative tightening. They're raising interest rates so people can't borrow money as easily. People don't qualify for mortgages or loans. And they're pulling in the money supply. They're contracting the money supply. Well, why are they doing that? To try to slow down hyperinflation. Hyperinflation, if you know, we basically have it in America, it just, they carried it out over a longer period of time. You know, 70, 80 years that they have allowed the currency to hyperinflate. Um, if you hear the stories of, oh, gas used to be 20 cents a gallon or something back in the early 1900s or back in the 1930s or whatever else, you hear these stories about that. If you have grandparents, they talk about how things were so cheap in the past. And, you know, uh, a dime store, you know, you hear about that. Now it's a dollar store. And then a lot of those are gone too. <laughs> um, but you hear these stories about how things were so much cheaper in the past. Well, that's not really true. Um, again, if you don't understand it, uh, things weren't really cheaper in the past. It, it's that the dollar, the scam wasn't quite as bad as it is right now. As the dollar, as they print more of it and they put more out there and borrow off of it and get interest in and all the other stuff that they do with the banking and the debt situation, the value of the dollar goes down and down and down. And that's what's really going on. And so how do you destroy that? Well, the BRICS nations, a lot of them have a lot of American dollars. And you can inject that into the American economy and it will do the exact opposite of what the Federal Reserve wants to do. So the BRICS nations can come along and they can say, hmm, what do we want to buy up here in America? You know what, let's buy some land. And so they start to offer people land. And there's stories I'm hearing of, uh, there was a guy in Arkansas, I think, that was offered money by China to, they wanted to put a some Bitcoin mining thing on his property or something. And they said, we want your property. And he said, no, I'm not selling to you. And they kept coming back. And I think they finally offered him $600,000 for his property. Just an insane amount. And he finally said, okay, I'll take it. You know, and... uh Again, unfortunately, what do you do? You have these BRICS nations that they're very, lots of American dollars, and they want to get rid of them, and they don't care. Hey, I want to buy that thing of yours, whatever it is, your land or your precious metals or anything else that actually has value. Um, and they come and they say, I'm going to give you some very high amount. What do you do about that? No, I have to be loyal to the government to the American government, I, I can't uh, take a bunch of Federal Reserve notes or whatever else. That would be the wrong thing to do. 
Well, in theory, it would be wrong because you're giving, you know, uh, something to the enemy of America. Um, you know, I saw too in, in uh, Michigan, they're putting in a, some big uh, Chinese $175 million factory to produce batteries or something like this for electric vehicles. That's real good. Uh, yes, let's have Chinese factories here in America. And I know that here in Maine, there's paper mills that are already owned by China. Uh, not good. Uh, can you say slave labor camps in the future? Yeah. But uh, what are people going to do? But see, that's the way that BRICS can, uh, the BRICS nations can come out and they can destroy the dollar by buying up, offering very high prices. And so as they inject more currency into the markets here in America, um, the dollar will become less and less valuable and all of us will have a harder time uh, buying food, paying bills, and whatever else. Uh, all that to say, brethren, um, it's going to get pretty rough in the future. This nation um, has had a blessing of the Lord upon it. That's definitely there. No question about it. But the prosperity that we have is false prosperity. Um, you look at the, uh, the amount of people with their new vehicles and whatever else and things in it and the nice big houses and all that, it's all debt. Very few people own what they live in and what they drive and a lot of them even the clothes on their back. So I'll be doing some sermons today uh, when I get to the office talking about some of this stuff uh, from the Bible. This is just a little quick little rant video, so to speak. But uh, the day of reckoning is here. It's not coming, it's here. And um, being attacked in the financial area is going to be very difficult because it's going to mess up a lot of people. And um, if you're not prepared for it, it's going to get pretty rough. And if you're in a lot of debt, um, oh boy, uh, I don't know what to tell you. You better pray very hard about that. And uh, try your very best to get out of debt because the day could come when they could have debtor prisons here in America. They actually used to have them in America. I've talked about that in other studies. So, you know, if you're in debt and you can't pay it, uh, you go to a prison. The Bible even talks about that. Uh, going in and uh, basically a lot of the slavery in the Old Testament was people that owed money. They would have to go and they would have to work it off. Um... So, uh, do your best to pay down your debts, brethren. Um, and you, you aren't going to hear this stuff in the average ministry. It's, it's so sad to me. And, you know, going to the church buildings over the years, you know, all right, let's get the service started. Let's have some prayer requests and people raise their hand, you know, and I, I'm having some problems with my money here and I'm prob having this and that. And we're hoping to get a house please pray for us we're we're trying to get a home and right now we're going through the mortgage process and whatever and oh yeah and then a preacher will stand up there and he'll pray you know please help brother and sister so and so we get their mortgage and and i'm thinking you know they, these guys they go off to seminary and they're they're taught the basics of scripture but they're taught mostly to win souls that whole thing and they're just getting people into these buildings and just I give them a nice little life lesson or whatever from the Bible and and yell at them that they should be winning more souls and bringing more people to church and then they do and there's you know soul winning night and we're going to have a special cantata or something a little concert with our choir and and it'll be a good service and we have an Easter Sunday service here we can talk about Jesus dying on the cross maybe they even acted out or something in a lot of these churches they're just getting people in and they're not warning them. They're not telling them people going and saying, uh, you know, please help me. Please pray for me. I just was diagnosed with, you know, cancer or diabetes or something. And hell yeah, we'll pray for you. Lord, please help them with that. Where's the nutritional advice? The pastors don't know it. They don't know it. Uh, these guys and, you know, I mean, there's churches that actually uh, will mock organic food and mock nutritional advice and 
mock essential oils. Charles Lawson the one time was mocking uh, essential oils. So it's, it's of the devil, it's a new age and thing. And then same exact thing, uh, he's coming out and he's saying that pharmaceutical drugs are, are good and whatever else, defending pharmaceuticals and attacking essential oils. Because that's how these guys are trained. And that's what started this whole ministry, if you don't understand that. Um, that's what started it. Because I was going to church buildings and I wanted so bad to serve the Lord in a church, a local church, you know. And I was trying very hard to find one that I could do a tract ministry, do a, some kind of a book, like a library thing or something. Or, you know, I was going out soul winning, going door to door, knocking on doors, the whole thing. And I wanted really badly to serve the Lord at a church building. And I went from church building to church building. And they didn't want and a really hardcore ministry. Uh, it was it would send the wrong message to people in the community and whatever else. Uh, and so the Lord put it on my heart, you start a ministry. And you tell people the truths that they're not going to hear in church buildings. Uh, and so was born King James Video Ministries. I could have a church building someplace and I could get people to come there and worship me and Pastor Appreciation Day and the whole thing. And we could be a model Christian family and you know I could get a crowd are you kidding me I've preached in public so I've I've had people come and they bring people and things to hear me speak about different issues but uh, you know a lot of people act like oh Denlinger's just a cult guy he just speaks to cameras oh uh, well I put my face out there for the world to see put my name out there so most of these church hirelings they wouldn't do it if their life depended on them on it so <laughs> but um, we all have to be bold for the Lord don't be a coward don't be oh I don't want to talk about stuff and whatever else and you're going to get kicked for it I see it in the comments all the time I know you're going through it I know you get uh, stomped on and things by relatives and co-workers and former friends and whatever else that's Bible believing Christianity brethren so just be encouraged uh, with that keep fighting and um, if you're horribly in debt right now and things aren't looking so good for the future well pray pray very hard about that um, Lord only knows what's going to be happening in the future of this nation but uh, this this nation's under God's judgment that's only going to get worse from here so um, and we know we know it's happening that's the whole thing we know it's supposed to happen this way according to Bible prophecy. So it's, you know, it's frustrating in some ways, but encouraging in others, because we see, as we see more prophecy coming to pass, we know that our redemption draws nigh. So just use that as an encouragement. No matter how bad it gets, you have heaven to look forward to. All right, so that will be it. And uh, I have a bunch of sermons to do today, so look for a bunch of those to be coming out. A lot of good studies from the scriptures. So we'll see you then.